What was the first great civilization of the region of Italy? If you said Etruscan, you'd be correct. Hello and welcome to World History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and today we're going to chat about the region of modern Italy's first great civilization, not the Romans, but the Etruscans. Don't forget, the easiest way to support us is by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel so you don't miss out on our new videos every Tuesday and Friday. The Etruscans, who knew themselves as the Rosenna, were a culture that flourished in central Italy in the region of Etruria between the 8th and the 3rd century BCE, and they are first mentioned by the Greek writer Hesiod in the 8th century. They were a major trading entity in the Mediterranean, and in the ancient world, they were renowned for their mineral resources. Although much of the Etruscan culture and history was obliterated or absorbed by the Romans, Many Etruscan tombs and their contents, wall paintings, and the Roman adoption of Etruscan material and religious culture have survived. The Etruscans lived in independent city-states, linked only by their common language, religion, and general culture. This means that art, governmental, and architectural developments happened at different times in each city, since they were working autonomously. In central Italy during the Iron Age, a culture began to develop in around 1100 BCE, and they have been called the Villanovan culture. These peoples were actually what we know as the Etruscan culture in their early form. The lack of evidence showing that there was warfare in the region or migration of new peoples suggests that the Villanovan people never left and the Etruscan people never actually arrived but they are one in the same. The Villanovan exploited the numerous natural materials and resources, which meant that villages formed and houses were built, which were typically circular. The Villanovan grew crops, produced pottery, and participated in trade. By 750 BCE, the Villanovan culture had become the Etruscan culture, and many of the Villanovan sites would develop further into major Etruscan cities. The Etruscans exploited the natural and abundant resources to make metal tools, pottery, and various goods out of precious materials, such as gold and silver. The numerous Etruscan cities were connected via a trade network, and by the 6th century BCE, they had begun constructing their monumental sanctuaries, developing an organized city, and had established many close trade contacts, most notably with the Greeks and the Phoenicians. The Etruscans mostly exported foodstuffs, such as wine, olive oil, pine nuts, and grain, as well as iron and their Boccaro pottery, in exchange for slaves, raw materials, and Greek pottery. Due to the lack of textual sources from the Etruscans themselves, what we can understand about their social structure and values and governmental structure comes from places such as graffiti on pottery, tombs, short inscriptions, art, and descriptions by Greek and Roman writers. What is clear from the combined sources is their strong sense of family and kinship defining symbols of rule and status, and a more liberal attitude to the rights and roles of women in Etruscan society, compared to other ancient civilizations. Women had greater freedoms, such as owning land in their own right, but they still couldn't participate in public life past the social and religious occasions they could attend. The Etruscan government began with nobles and a king, who would have participated in both political and religious events. Over time, it changed from a monarchy to an oligarchy, where a council of elders or a citizen's assembly would vote one man in to rule for a one-year period. Some men dominated key roles in politics, law, and religion, and it seems that membership in a clan was more important than which city you came from. 
The only political communication between the Etruscan cities that we know of is the small amount of information that we have about the Etruscan League. What we know is that elders from either 12 or 15 of the most important cities would meet to form policy. In the earliest Etruscan sites, there are multiple separate cemeteries that seem to be divided by kin group, a practice that continued throughout the span of the Etruscan culture. By the 7th and 6th centuries BCE, the Etruscans were creating large stone tombs and social standing was shown through depositing rich grave goods in tombs. The number of these elite tombs grew quite high and they were developed in a grid formation, which pretty much created a city of the dead, even with their own streets. The Etruscans had their own pantheon of gods and ritual practices, although much of it was assimilated into Greek and Roman beliefs, which makes it harder to document Etruscan religion, especially since much of our knowledge comes from Greek and Roman writers, which contains bias and downplays the extent of the Etruscans' influence. Their most important practices were the use of augury, which was reading omens from birds and lightning strikes, and haruspicy, which was examining entrails of sacrificed animals, especially the liver, to divine future events. Other practices included animal sacrifices, where the burning of the offering was for the gods in the heavens, and the blood of the animal was for the underworld gods. They would also perform prayers, hymns and songs, pour libations on tombs during burials, and offer votives, which were left at temples, sacred spots and tombs. Much like the gods of Greece and Rome, the Etruscans had gods for important places, objects, ideas and events that controlled and affected everyday life. The early gods seemed to be faceless deities, but were made more human once they were incorporated into Greek religion. We know of the adoption of Etruscan gods by the Greeks because of depictions of the Olympian gods on Greek pottery, which were inscribed with the Etruscan names. Priests in Etruscan religious ceremonies were mostly males, and limited evidence suggests that some women may have had a role in religious ceremonies. One of the greatest legacies left by the Etruscans are the vibrant tomb paintings, which have only been found in around 2% of burials, which makes it easy to identify the elite from the population. Using organic materials, the Etruscans made vibrant colours and depicted scenes of daily life, including hunting, banquets and sports, Etruscan mythology, architectural features, and sometimes even events from the life of the tomb's occupant. The ancient city of Tarquinia is probably the best known for its well-preserved tombs, including the Tomb of the Augurs, which depicts the use of dogs in funerary rituals, among other aspects of Etruscan culture. The tomb paintings give modern historians a good idea of Etruscan daily life, eating habits, clothing, and also reveal social attitudes, notably towards slaves, foreigners, and women, which wouldn't be otherwise known. Since the Etruscans were lucky to have rich mineral resources, they put it to good use in the form of sculpture. Before the Greeks began to produce them, the Etruscans first created nude statues of their female deities. Other than the finely carved bronze and terracotta statues, the Etruscans are known for their bronze mirrors, gold jewellery, and their black pottery known as buccaro. Although not many survive, we know that they created large sculpture works, most notably the Chimera of Arezzo, the beast which was killed by the Greek hero Bellephoron in mythology, which is made out of bronze and dates to the 5th or the 4th century BCE. Eventually, the Etruscans were completely assimilated into the Roman Empire, but their art and culture were a huge influence on the Romans. The Romans adopted the Etruscan victory procession, which would become the Roman triumph. The white, purple, or with a red border robe of the Etruscans would become the Roman toga. Etruscan divination practices were adopted, and many words from the Etruscan language were passed on to the Romans, with the Etruscan alphabet being an important influence on the Latin script. 
The Etruscans use of dogs in ritual and sports, whether gladiatorial games or racing, was adopted by the Romans, and their military, political, and religious organisation also influenced those of the Romans and the Greeks. Do you know if your country's culture emerged from another older civilization or a mix of different past cultures? Let us know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any new uploads. As always, if you'd like to learn more about the Etruscans, you can find links to a bunch of our articles all about this fascinating and influential culture in the caption below. This video was brought to you by World History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the links below. World History Encyclopedia is a non-profit organisation, so if you'd like to support our work, you can head to our Patreon, either by the pop-up in the top corner of the screen or via the Patreon link down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you soon with another video.